What it is, what's up, beef in the cut. I'm not talking about the TV show. Um, this is going to be loosely formed. It's going to be just a lot of shit thrown against the wall. Um, no real research done. Just kind of an internet motherfucker using the internet coming to some conclusions. Um, but we have here... We have this disc record, uh, Euphoria, by Kendrick Lamar. I'm not editing this, by the way. It's not going to be some kitschy, Sean C.S. cut in here. I'm just going to, like, drop this raw dog in and just put it up there. Um, and with Euphoria, what what works here is that it's long. It's very honest. It seems like Kendrick is, like, pretty much just letting out everything he's felt about uh, Aubrey over the last you know however many years uh, and basically in that we get almost like a, a, a poet session at points and times um, I wish you would just have force closed on me brother anyway um, so it's just a thing where basically he's just giving his like take on Drake as a human being uh, which I mean honestly we've seen it now with multiple uh, people that are very well regarded MCs at you know one point or another, in their disses of Drake, they pretty much look to deconstruct Drake the human being, uh, because Drake the human being, Aubrey Graham is, as you would imagine, significantly different than Aubrey Graham the actor, uh, Aubrey Graham the you know orator, you know all these different things that he he does. Um, okay, it was lying like a motherfucker. I think I just watched the film back, which means that I actually did end up fucking editing this. Anyway, uh, so basically, Kendrick, the soldier, uh, at a certain point, we get into this where he's basically just letting out how he feels about Drake as a human being. Uh, as I was saying, MCs, very lyrical, and times past, have just basically tried to break down into Drake as a fake motherfucker. Uh, I, I was thinking about Joe Budden and Pusha T, but I forgot that Common also did the same thing, um, even before they did. Common's this was sweet, which essentially just kind of like looks at Drake as being like a, a pussy of, of sorts. Um, and Common tries to be like the hard person, that kind of duo there, which Common being like the... Common's like played with the juxtaposition of being a lyrical MC and also being a guy that came from the hood, uh, being a dude that's done some you know, uh, shit in, in his time. And um, being a guy that's also like done occasional rap songs where he's like talking about, you know, tricking um you know whores stuff like that so sweet is like him trying to be like the hard nigga in kind of the you know battle uh joe budden and his like 55 disses of against budget t or put against um drake and um they were the first two were like fantastic i believe it was wake and making a murder i think it's making a murder than wake in that order but basically those two were i thought really good disses of drake um drake had sent what was perceived as a sub towards Budden uh, on no... It was a thing with the receipts as the cover. It was him and French Montana. No Shopping, I think, is the name of the song. Uh, it's like 2016, so a long while ago. And um, Joe, with having... Uh, Don't Drake kind of be like a stand of his at one point in time, uh, kind of just like talked about, you know, Drake being, you know, really a, a fake-ass nigga in a lot of ways. And... Um, kind of address Drake in that way, but had some really good, like, punchlines, and in general, I like, just kind of, like, you know, pretty much, like, fathered Drake, in a sense. I'm not even going to the story of Adidon and Pusha T. I mean, I think we kind of know what that was, but with Infrared, and even Exodus 23, uh, colon 1, which is more, like, towards Wayne and Birdman, um, really, like, to the ground, grassroots of, like, what the artist Drake is as, like, a facade. And then, like, once he kind of baited, you know, Drake into responding with Duffy, then he, like, got into, like, the... Because it's almost like a Trojan horse, where, like, Infrared, again, him just talking about, like, Drake having Ghost Riders and shit he talked about previously, opens the door to come in there with more deep, hard-hitting shit, and he just, obviously, just washes Drake away. So that's where we get into what nostalgia could end up being long-term, uh, what the attention of what nostalgia is, and, um, you know, just kind of like, I think, what that gap in time was. So we'll start with the gap in time. I think that Kendrick um, 
I don't think he necessarily gathered dirt for this record. Like, everything he talks about is more or less, like, depending on some parts of that song, almost just about public knowledge. There's some parts of that where if it's what has been theorized is some fucked shit. But for the most part, like, public knowledge. Like, him, um, the, the BBL, as fucking Drake, uh, as um, Rick Ross put it, uh, he has the fake abs. I don't think Drake, uh, Kendrick brought up Drake's like fake nose or whatever nose job. I don't think he brought that up, but he brought up the abs. Um, I don't think it was common knowledge that his father had Parkinson's. I think that's what Kendrick was getting at at one point there. I don't, I didn't know his father had Parkinson's, uh, but the line that he mentioned that in was very, very hard. Um, he mentioned, you know, the, the ghost riding, you know, I think he alluded to a couple people that I, I suppose are like Drake ghost riders. Um, talked about, you know, him being like not really black, uh, you know, kind of attaching himself towards like street or trap or black artist, uh, to kind of feel blacker, um, to be a part of the culture, you know, so he did that, um, addressed the Tupac shit, you know, uh, talked about the, I mean, from Canada trying to like pretend to be like a black motherfucker, a black American, you know. A rap nigga. Cover like pretty much most, I think, the the, the big things that we've already gotten. I uh, also of course Hart talked about um in a very clever way, you know, him being like not a good father at all. Uh but you know, he kinda gets to like the part of like Drake being somebody who just like doesn't um like women. And if this is where, like, we have multiple entendres in this song. But I think what Kendrick could be alluding here could be where i think a subsequent disc would be fucking fire so i want to get to that part so let's just close the gap in time the gap in time i think was pretty much kendrick pinning this kind of shaping what i think he wanted this to be but also like mapping out what the next disc would be and i think it's important to kind of like it's more important to think about what that is than, than this honestly because i think like if he can stick the landing on the next disc, then, like, it's probably going to be something that, like, ends all of this. Like, I, I would contend that, like, we'll, we'll, we'll get into what I think this kind of is up being. But Gap of Time, basically, uh, mapping out this disc, you know, kind of, like, shaping, like, I, I'm going to make a napalm or I'm just going to make, you know, like, basically a couple of jabs. Like, you know, kind of like a Ryan Garcia in the first couple of rounds, you know. And the next one would be like that, that shot Garcia hit, a clean like left hook he hit on a, on a handy at some point. I think it was round four, round five. Um, and it basically busts open the fight, you know. So I think that's what, this one is like the lead up to that, basically. I still think it's better. Like, I still think it's better than push-ups because of the simple fact that like, I think he really sets the floor to go, to really engage you in a way that's like, Okay, so you could, like, burn Drake inside. Like, I don't know if you're going to say anything that's, like, way, 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 way new that, that no one's ever heard of. But I think you have the capacity to, like, burn Drake up, which I think is what Ether kind of was, if you think about it. Like, I think Ether was something that, like, hurt Jay-Z. And obviously, like, if you're around, like, New York City, you know, power... Or hot ninety seven. I, I can't believe like a fake hip hop fan here, but the one Angie Martinez, like you know, obviously Jay Z, like being somber as fuck, like you know, tearfully apologizing for super ugly. Um, that's the result of a person that's like was hurt by the, the previous diss record. I think that's what Kendrick would go for here. So I, I think obviously like the whole let's eliminate you know, Kendrick shit that Kanye was talking about when Justin LeBoy was sucking his cock on uh, you know their their interview. Um, I don't, I don't think I don't think you can do that. Like I don't think like Ether couldn't eliminate Jay Z. You know, like no Vaseline couldn't take out you know Easy E and fucking you know. I really didn't mention Dre too much, honestly. Uh, but it, it you can't really like at a certain level you can't really like be washed away. Like this isn't like Cameron, Dear Stan, like where this is a nobody. You just like kind of like. Here's your stand, and like now you're gone, and you're never gonna have a career ever again. Like it's you can't do that, right? Like you can't. But he wants to like fuck up. Like this is a 
honestly, more than likely, since control, honestly, um, this is at least like a control kind of sparkling, you know, budding thing that uh, as we kind of got to the BT Cypher verse, that was, you know, Pajamas line, uh, that was, some people thought it was in reference to like Papoose and like shit like that. As a kid, it's like going to go into B and T, like those shots are fucking. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's a shot at fucking Drake. So that's like 2014. So basically, like 10 years plus of just like sizzling. Uh, they haven't worked with each other since then. They've been on multiple albums. DJ Khaled, I was a thing together. Uh, other albums that they've been on together, but they haven't been like on a song together since 2013. Um, and this was was well, 2012, I guess, because that was that was uh, Poetic Justice. So yeah, that's 2012. I would think that, like, both parties really, I think, want to come in this, like, different ways, but both understand that they're not eliminating another person. I think Drake wants to, like, finally, like, assert, like, you fuck niggas, so I couldn't be, like, that nigga in hip-hop. Uh, you know, I was just, like, a, just a, a pop star. Yeah, I was, like, really big. And then I come out here, and, like, I take the fucking head of the supposed God MC of his generation. I pull his fucking head up, you know, like, fucking Damon Targaryen against the, the crab fucker in House of the Dragon. I hold his head in front of him and just drop him the fucking linoleum. Linoleum? Linoleum? And I'm the God MC now. I'm the God MC. I'm fucking Aubrey Graham. And he's untouchable for like the rest of his life. Like if he fucking slays Kendrick, then he is impenetrable, essentially. For all intents and purposes. And then for Kendrick, it's just like, I don't think you're living in reality. I don't think you ever have. And now... You finally gave me the chance to expose you to these people who don't know you. But the thing is, everything he says, like, the majority of what he says is stuff we know. And that's where we get to the next part. So, what does the next song look like? For one, uh, it's important to mention, I think Joe Budden said in one of his podcasts that, like, he had heard that from both camps that they had napalm coming up in their disses, which... What you you would think would be in reference to push ups and euphoria respectively. I don't know. I, I, for Drake, I think that was his napalm. Like, I think Drake needed to address the industry, and that he did in a way I thought was a pretty good response. All I'll let you sit Like if you think about that, came out like what a week after like that, two weeks after like that. Like it was a very quick turnaround. Dissing seven people, more or less. You push that shit out there. I mean, that was, to me, like, a statement, you know, song by, by Drake there. Song and diss, honestly. I mean, like, he, you know, half a bar, quite a few niggas on there. And, um, you know, the only person he didn't respond to was Rick Ross. So, um, from there, you know, if I'm taking that to believe that the napalm was in favor of those tracks, then that means that this would be, assuming that it's goes like every other beef in the history of music, uh, it's supposed to escalate on top of the previous songs. So with that being in mind, I would think for, I'm not going to go into Drake too much here, but I, I would think for Drake's angle here, like you're pretty much, me and my, one of my coworkers talked about it, like I think Drake is going to go back into the, the whole wifey thing. Uh, I think he's going to pretty much like uh, say that, like, Whitney got, Whitney being Kendrick's wife, by the way, uh, got railed by a bodyguard or something like that, just got, you know, uh, done by one of Kendrick's guys, and, um, apparently there's some rumor, I didn't even know about this, apparently there's some rumor where basically, like, his kid is, like, one of his kids, I guess he has two, I think, one of his kids are, like, a product of being cheated on, like, it's not Kendrick's kid. So basically, super ugly, basically, like, super ugly, like, you know, I went into your daughter's, you know, fucking car scene, like, you know, I left condoms on it, basically, that's the, that's what Jay-Z's entire super ugly was, like, I, I fucked your wife and left condoms in the back seat, um, and I think that's what Drake would go for, which it seems like that makes sense to me, because Drake is going to bring up, like, partners, wives, anything that he could get, like, his penis into, like, that's going to be the radius of like scathing for him like it's not gonna really get too much deeper than that uh you know i think he plays like his mind games in a way that like 
usually supersedes a song. I mean, we literally have like, I think it was Range Brothers, or is it Family? T I think it was Family Ties, where Mr. PG Lane Associate, uh, Mini Kendrick, is rapping about like number two being in his you know, girls DMs. Drake like doesn't play the game. I think for disses all the time, but if he was going to bring that level of manipulative behavior, you know, really digging into it on a needle, precise level. It's probably going to be in the form of, like, talking about Kendrick's wife. So, I think as him, uh, Kendrick, I would think Kendrick is going to mention uh, Drake being a pedophile in greater depth. I'm not, I don't want to be cease and desist. I, I'm not calling Drake a pedophile. I'm not saying that. I don't want, like, Chubbs to fuck me up. I don't want Jay Prince to fuck me up. I don't want anybody to fuck me up. I'm not calling Drake a pedophile. I don't want YouTube to fuck me up. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that Kendrick is calling Drake a pedophile. That's two different things. Uh, listen, I'm not. I'm not calling him that. Kendrick is calling him that. And Kendrick is, I think, calling him that, by my by my interpretation, very loudly. Uh, he talks about him not fucking with women, double entendre, triple entendre, possibly, depending on another thing I'm going to mention in a second here, which maybe I don't know. Some people may consider even more scared than pedophilia. I would say it's not, but. Yes, a lot of black people. There's nothing worse than what I'm about to mention here. A lot of black males, especially. But this piece, the pedophilia part. Um, Euphoria. Drake is a producer on Euphoria. And you've seen this a thousand times on Twitter by this point. But he is a uh, producer on Euphoria. Uh, Euphoria is a TV show I've only watched three episodes of, or I think maybe even two. Uh, but basically, the cast, all very fine, for the most part, very fine women. Alessa Demi, uh, Cindy Sweeney. Uh, Zendaya Coleman I don't know if she really has a last name at this point but even like Barbie Fierre looked good in that I'm not making fun of Barbie Fierre but like if you ask me about Barbie Fierre before that TV show came out anyway so the point being it's a song like uh, a song a song of ice and fire and cocaine and fucking guys all the Um it's a show about high school which basically skins adjacent where they're fucking uh, a lot. They're doing a lot of drugs. A lot of shit that, like, is basically skins, but, like, in the modern era. And Drake's the, you know, the person that, like, is a producer on that TV show, you know? So, he kind of alluding that he's kind of co-signing pedophilia, you know, in a sense. I don't know, like, what this Tim Drake's involvement is on that show. I didn't even know he's a producer on it before today. So, I don't know. But they are supposed to be high school age in the TV show. And they are, like, being fucked by, like, grown men. That Literally, the first episode, I think Hunter Schaefer's character, like, gets fucked by uh, a dude from that she meets, meets off a grinder. So, literally the first episode. I only watched the episodes and I even saw that because it was in the first fucking episode. So, <laughs> so you know, I... Oof. Uh, obviously, you know, the Millie Bobby Brown shit will probably come up if, if he does go that route, uh, because that's weird as fuck. I also think that, uh, to Joe Budden, which Drake tries to get ahead of this, I had a, I alluded to this on Twitter. I may post a tweet, you know, if I actually do edit this, but basically, um, so Drake is in front of him, Taylor May freestyle. He's like, you know, the Tupac voice, like. Ooh, this dude that fucking likes little kids and, you know, Joe Budden talked about on the podcast, so it's got to be true. You try to get ahead of it. Like, try to, like, take it out because it's, like, the most damning thing, like, Kendrick rap about. If he had any evidence whatsoever for that claim, it's GG for Drake. Like, that would be the only thing I think of is, like, really, like, fuck that nigga's career up. Because that's, like, you know, um, it's, like, Puff Daddy, like, but, like, I don't Did Puff Daddy... I thought Puff Daddy's like charges. Like I know it's pretty bad shit, but I don't know if it, I don't think it's child like any of that shit. I think it's like sex trafficking though, which is like one rung. I don't want to say higher or lower, but like one rung that's less bad than like the child shit, the CP shit. But it's like Harvey Weinstein, like you know, Kevin. I can I say Kevin Spacey? I don't. I can't. Listen, I'm just throwing names out there harmlessly. I have no platform whatsoever. If I say a name that like is not taken into the uh, nicest um, consideration by very big people. I don't have any platform at all. You see my sub account. Please uh, just 
keep that in mind. You know, I don't have any platform at all. Kevin Spacey, that motherfucker gets shot the paint. I don't want any fucking beef with Kevin Spacey, even though basically Kendrick, bring it all back, Kendrick basically alludes to Drake being fucking Kevin Spacey. Mob boss talk. Pedophile. I'm not, I'm not calling Kevin Spacey a pedophile. I'm just saying, like, that's what people talk about. Please, I don't, I don't want any beef with Kevin Spacey. Out of all the people in the world, I'd beef with Joe Biden before I'd beef with Kevin Spacey. I don't want any fucking beef with Kevin Spacey. I'm just saying what people say about Kevin Spacey. Anyway, um, that's basically kind of like what he kind of goes to, like, Kevin Spacey. And Kevin Spacey's homosexual. Uh, that actually is a, a fact. Um, he's come out the closet and said that. The other part that makes Euphoria a triple entendre is this is just Twitter. Like, listen, I'm not like I don't. Th- this is me just saying what's on Twitter right now. I'll look it up for you if you. I, it's going to be the first. We look it up both. Pull up, pull up, pull your phone out. Go into the search button on Twitter if you have the app. It's called S. The Remedial version uh, name of the album is S. The not remedial is Twitter. So go to S. Go to search. Type in Drake. Just type in it with me. Hunter Schaefer is S C H A F E A F E R. Okay. Drake Hunter Schaefer. Follow along with me. Follow along. The second tweet on my on my timeline. The second tweet that I my my timeline. Now listen, it's all relative because it's the fucking algorithm and all the bullshit, uh, dark arts that goes in that pl- uh, application. But here's this is this is literally the same. I'm not making this up. Like this is this is streets are saying Drake look with Hunter Shake. And that's the second tweet. If you ignore the Cardano GPT fucking horse shit. The fourth real tweet, brother read between the lines, buddy just told the world Drake slept with Hunter Schaefer. Um, I, I muted Adam 22. Uh, fucking Adam 22 is a fucking cornball. Um, the, the next tweet down is some dude running like Aubrey defense protocols. Daffy Bar Brady. I thought Kendrick was saying Drake banged a trans person by calling it euphoria and saying we hate the women you fucked because they confuse themselves with real women. I'm going to talk about that in a second. He is EP on the show and has picks with everyone but Hunter Schaefer, but I did just take Adderall. Okay, so I'm going to talk about... Okay, so I I didn't... This is from 2022. I don't... This is... He just randomly posted Hunter Schaefer at some point two years ago. I don't... I mean, I guess he's a producer. Maybe that was like around the new season of Euphoria. I didn't know he was a producer. Uh, this is a tweet that was one of the first tweets like I, I saw about this when I typed it in at work earlier. Um, Drake on set for Euphoria. This is from 2023, by the way. So like July 2023. Um, Drake on set for Euphoria. Kind of, you know, parentheses. Getting the backdrop. Okay, Hunter Schaefer. So in this scene, you will, you'll be a 14-year-old. That's Drake's quote. Hunter's quote. Um, how does that make sense? My character is a 17 year old high school senior. Uh, Drake, you're 14 now. Okay, well. Is there, is there like a scene where Hunter Schaefer is like even younger and like being involved in sexual acts? Is that something that happens in you know, the show? Again, I fucking two episodes in. I'm doing it. Um. So that's the, that's the other entendre that. Like, nobody, nobody knows. Uh, <laughs> did Drake get fucked by Hunter Schaefer? Like, I don't know what, like, that That was the one that made me sit there and just say, okay. Like, if, like, the pedophilia is just, like, bad. But, like, apparently, like, like niggas just don't care about, like, Drake, like, t- testing Hunter, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, like, at, like, fucking 16, 17 years old. I guess niggas don't care about that. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess niggas don't care about that. I, I don't know. 
niggas didn't care about R. Kelly and, and Aaliyah until like people made niggas care about R. Kelly and Aaliyah twenty years later. I I don't know how Hollywood works. I'm broke and I live in a shitty studio apartment, so like I don't know what Hollywood looks like. I don't even know what it smells like. I don't know what it tastes like or feels like. I don't have no senses about it. But Kendrick had a set sense that uh, there's some crazy shit happening with Euphoria because that nigga made the song title about that fucking word and probably the TV show and probably about some shady shit between Drake and that TV show. I don't know if he got fucked by Hunter Schaefer, but like I do think that it would be uh, not good <laughs> for Drake if it, <laughs> if it came out that he was fucking Hunter Schaefer. And I only say that because Drake is... And Kendrick talks about this. A big part of Drake's persona at this point is being the mob boss, being the nigga linked with the trap niggas, all that shit. That's a huge part of his of his boss. And for him to come to the studio with some of those dudes, Future Hendrix, Kodak, uh, some of these dudes that are not exactly the most, uh, I would say, probably progressive of human beings, I, I think getting fucked by Hunter Schaefer would not be the best look. I don't know if that happened, but I think that, I think having a child by your, you know, taking care of a child from your wife that got, you know, knocked up by your bodyguard, I think that's here as far as damaging Kendrick. I, I think getting fucked by Hunter Schaefer maybe <laughs> I don't think I can get out. If that happened, I don't think I can get out. I don't know if that happened, but to me, that's like, although I obviously think like if Drake's like really like that with little kids, I think that should be like number one. But in terms of actually damaging Drake's positioning and all this, I think the Hunter Schaefer should. Anyway, so one thing that people are using to kind of discredit that theory is that like Kendrick literally has a song on uh morale and mid steppers where he's like literally like kind of coming to grips with like his uncle being a trans human being so for him to go out there and have that be like the spectacle of that album and then turn around and say like drink some fuck with real women would be uh probably pretty fucking condemning for kendrick honestly like kendrick's audience i don't think he can afford to be like transphobic in any kind of way all oh. <laughs> Kendrick has a very uh and you know neoliberal like there's like if you think about Girl in Red and like the audience for Girl in Red, there's at least as far as those fans and like the rapper they would listen to, there's a very high overlap between that and Kendrick's like consumers. Kendrick can't afford to like be out here being transphobic. So I do understand that theory. I, I get it. But maybe Kendrick is just <laughs> maybe Kendrick is throwing it out there. Like just like I'm not talking about it, but like if you think I'm talking about it, you know, just put put your not size seven shoes on. Take a couple steps out there, just take a deep breath and think about it. What if I was talking about it? And then Drake's like, okay, well, fuck. If you're really talking about that, then I may have to reconfigure some things in my, you know, my, my circle, my camp. I don't know how it would just now come out that Drake is fucking. If, I, I've been saying Hunter Schaefer is fucking Drake because that's more funny to me. But <laughs> either one is fucking another. I, I don't know how that would have not. That now just came out. That would have been a fucking bombshell from the heavens. I will say, all these trans people. Um, like very high, like famous ones that fuck these very massive artists. They have a like looser lips, no pun intended, than a lot of these like act. I almost fucked myself up. Um, than a lot of these other uh, women have in uh, these high celebrity, high profile engagements. Because Ben Simmons was fucking one uh, a trans person, and um. That never really made the waves. Um, I don't know if that person ever like actually admitted to it, which I think is a part why I didn't. Uh, I think Playboy Cardi, Playboy Cardi was having sex with a trans person. Um, 
but I don't think it ever got confirmed because the person so they have like looser lips than a lot of these people so maybe Hunter Schaefer just kind of kept that to themselves but I do think if that would happen that would be like for a lot of reasons I mean like it's you is one of the biggest HBO like IPs at this point like it's like you have Game of Thrones slash House of the Dragon which is obviously going to be like number one for perpetuity um, as long as it's still going but right below that it probably is Euphoria that's probably their second like big dog at this point if that gets to season three, which would should this happen on that show, I, I highly doubt it will. But if it does, if you talk about the producer for that show was like fucking one of the co-stars, like that would that's some shit that's happened in a TV show. I was like, don't get me wrong, but like I don't think that would like fly over well with HBO, who was like trying to be the king, the gods of TV at this point. You know, I don't think I'd go over well with them. Especially with, like, all the other bullshit with that fucking showrunner they have. Uh, I think it was Sam Levinson, whatever. The Idol dude, that shit was... I didn't even watch it, but shit I heard about that show? That nigga can't afford to be having Drake fucking co-stars. Uh, anyway, I don't know what the fuck I... I, I lost all the structure of this. Anyway, I... <laughs> oh, yeah, let's close out on this. Kind of the directions of um, this. Pretty much, more or less... I think that Euphoria was A to whatever the next joint will be. I think that's going to be B. Like, I think he intends on ending this with whatever that song is. That's just me. But I think like it's going to be GG if he gets his way. Uh, and Drake responds with something that's not like basically like a one hit or quitter. Like that shit. Like basically Drake either knocks out Kendrick or Kendrick knocks out Drake. Like that's it. Like that's the end of this. It's like if you have Smash going on, you have like. 300 plus uh, on both opponent, like both opponents have 300 plus health, and the next punch, no matter what type of punch it is, just ends the game. I think that's where those two are looking to have this uh, be. At. So turnaround time, I think Drake drops his either this weekend or next weekend. I think he believes strongly in the idea of hitting you on like Friday. Um, having people like play the record over the weekend, be able to like pretty much only focus on that record. Uh, you know, once he got for work or whatever, uh, that'd be the topic conversation for the weekend. And I think that he uh, wants it to really um, come quickly. You know, I think it's important for him. Like he's pretty much like made his like name at this point with coming back almost immediately to disses. Like he did the same thing with Meek Mill. Uh, didn't do the same thing with the story of added on that. There's never a response that came out to the story of added on. Uh, but I think he do wants he does want to do like quick as possible. I think it's just that's his mo. And I think that he wanted a response from Kendrick. Like I think he has something stocked, whether it be the Whitney thing or something even more explosive. I think he had his thing ready to go. Taylor made freestyle. I think that was just like a Taylor dropping the album, so it's like easy eyes. Um, he knew Kendrick was not gonna come like immediately, so he got to make pretty much. Throw like a, a pretty much an unguarded punch, like something that Kendrick like couldn't respond to really, and um, he also like I think probably went for a very personal jab with the whole like here are your two like West Coast predecessor legends and like you know the AI and it also kind of taps into the whole AI narrative that kind of surrounded this beef. So I think it was just like a really perfect like bite sized, uh, if you want to call it a diss like record as well. It was like perfect in terms of just like this is a me controlling the narrative completely and I'm like really applying pressure on this nigga. And I think in doing that, I think he showed that he really wants Kendrick to respond. So whatever he has next, I think it's pretty much already ready to go, more or less. Probably tweaked a little bit to, to reflect like stuff that's come out, you know, with this new record uh from Kendrick. But I think this is gonna be pretty much ready to go. Kendrick I I think I, I would have to think if Kendrick is the the mind, the hip hop mind, I think that he has been rightfully attributed to being. Like, he is a hip-hop mind. He is, uh, you know, Lupe, who, like, Lupe hates Kendrick, but, like, Lupe, um, you know, uh, Ice Cube, you know, like, early Kanye, like, these dudes are, like, who just, like, who know hip-hop on, like, a mental level that, like, can't really be touched by too many people. Kendrick, I think, is up that lane. And if he is of that lane, which I think he is, I would have thought that he would basically be making the subsequent disc record pretty much as soon as he's making this one. Again, just like Drake, 
make some tweaks to whatever comes out from Aubrey. But unless he wants to just do something that like nobody does, where like he just drops his napalm before Drake even responds, like he just preemptively blitzkrieges him. That's one of the other. That's just two paths. He just like waits it out. He has his ready to go, or he just like tries to end the shit ASAP. I don't think he, based on his own like ending closure out to that song, I think he wants Drake to follow up. He wants to see what Drake has, and he's gonna like, game, game, smash your voice. Um, it's fun though. It's really fun. It, it, this is all very fun shit. I, I really am enjoying all of this uh, a lot. Because I think hip hop, it's been such a dry place mainstream wise, and it's because, like I came up, you know, me as a jet, you know, teens, and the other twenty tens were like competition. That's not necessarily beef, but there's a lot of beef. Not necessarily beef, but collaboration and competition were like hand in hand down there. I don't know if anybody just saw me spit right there, but it just it happens. Um, I mean, everybody collaborated. Everybody, you had ASAP Rocky collaborating with collab uh, Action Bronson, Action Bronson with Chance the Rapper, Chance the Rapper with Gambino, uh, Gambino with Schoolboy Q, uh, Q with Rocky. Like, you could just like pretty much get honestly, you didn't even need like six degrees of separation to get from one artist uh, in the kind of internet era. I don't necessarily know if you call it the blog era, but you call it the blog era, I guess. Uh, the blog era, you couldn't need six degrees, you could keep doing it in half the time. Like, you could get from J. Cole to Big Sean and, like, three people. Because it was, like, J. Cole, Kendrick, Big Sean. Um, I mean, fucking ASAP Nas to, like... What's the hard I can think about talking about that? Christ Dillinger to ASAP Nas. That'd be ASAP Nas, ASAP Rocky, ASAP Rocky School, uh, SGP, SGP, Christ Dillinger. Um... I don't know why I'm doing this. Like I, I have no clue. Um, Isaiah Rashad to <sighs> Isaiah Rashad to Jack Mushroom, who was a MC that thought he was an odd future but wasn't. Isaiah Rashad to Schoolboy Q. Q to Tyler. I can make this last one more because. I could, but basically, one of Tyler's beats as Lucy was used by Schooly Three Hundred, who was like Jack Mushroom's half brother. Um, so Schooly was technically on a song with Tyler the Creator. So you link them up that way, and you link School Schooly Three Hundred to Jack Mushroom. So that's three degrees of separation, I guess. I guess maybe four, but like literally just about any MC you could think of from that period of time. Do a link within like three degrees of separation between each other. Like it's it's easy as fuck. But in that it's also competition. Like one train is a cipher where dudes are trying to rip each other's fucking heads off on that cipher. Like these are probably like three or four, three or four of like the top dog uh young guys at that point in time, 2013. Because you had ASAP Rocky, who just came off of like that would have been, like, Live Love came out in 2011, and Long Live came out in 2013, but it was, like, leaked in 2012. So, basically, like, two straight years of, like, fire-ass projects. Uh, Joey Badass, who had coming off of Waves and Summer Nights, which I still love to this day. Um, you had Bronson, who had, by that point, the, the I think both Blue Chips, and then, the um, you know, he had some other really good tapes out there, but both Blue Chips. Um, you had... Was Sandy Brown on one train? I think Danny Brown's on one train, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, Danny Brown had... I think he... No, he wouldn't have had old by that point, but old came out in 2013, I think after uh, Long Live. And he had SSS, which was, you know, huge at the point in time. And then Big Crit, who, you know, I don't know less too many Big Crit projects, but, like, Big Crit, obviously, another huge MC that kind of, like, was, I think, predicted to do a lot more at that point in time than he kind of ended up doing. But he's, I mean, he's one of those, like, kind of, you know, kind of, cult classic type MCs like he's a legend in his lane so to speak it's kind of like currency or you know what have you um that's competition like it wasn't dissing and shit like even with control like control wasn't a diss you know it's just like I love you motherfuckers but like I'm better than you niggas and 
most of them niggas didn't take their ass to fucking diss. James Electronica did, Big Sean did, fucking Drake did, but like, <laughs> I guess, you know, two of the people featuring the track did, but like, most of them didn't take that as a diss, you know? So, you know, um, it, it, hip hop needed this, man. There's not a lot of like, in mainstream sense, I, I guess there are people who are, like, keeping that spirit alive, but, like, they're not interesting. I don't want to listen to fucking, like, Jid or Boss or Dreamville. I don't want to listen to anybody from Dreamville. I don't want to. I, it's not fun, and they're not interesting. Like, they're, that is, Earth Gang, like, none of these people are fun to listen to. Like, I had fucking ASAP Rocky, and I had fucking Action Bronson, and they give me fucking Jid. I don't want to listen to Jid. I don't, I don't, no offense to any of those people, but, like, they're, like, J. Cole, a lot of them are, like, J. Cole derivatives in content. I don't want no, no. I don't want to listen to J. Cole, but like, so, so I don't want to listen to them. Um, it, it needed this. Even if it's like the old niggas that like probably shouldn't still have to be the big three because by this point, like, you know, I mean, Drake's first joint was Room for Improvement, I think, in 2007. Kendrick's, you know, um, had nigga in charge, like, somewhere around that time. J. Cole was somewhere around that time. Like, these dudes are like mid 30s, like almost 40. I think they might be forty. Like these shouldn't be still the top dogs in rap at this point, but they are because fucking this generation has not produced a good replacement. I'm not gonna go into like what that like who should be in that list because it'll take another thirty minutes. But like somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do the fucking job. Like somebody's got to be the, the the guy. And I I honestly commend Drake, Cole, Kendrick, even Future, and. Metro Boom for producing a boring ass album that like made all this happen. Hip hop needed this badly, really badly. Cause like last year, like you see like hip hop, like the first number one album from hip hop was like mid fucking 2023. And it was like the bloated ass eternal talk, a talk, a talk, eternal talk. It wasn't that it was actually a pink tape, but it doesn't really matter. Like all Uzi albums at this point are the same. So, um, Hip hop like needs the fucking uh, CPR, the death fibrillator. It needs to be woken the fuck up because <laughs> it, it needs it. And hopefully this like produces. I, I I've seen the tweets, I've seen some of the derived songs, I've seen some of this shit. But like hopefully somewhere in all of this it produces like, another star, like somebody else that's not Baby King needs to, <laughs> needs to come out of this a fucking superstar, not Baby King. Anybody else for Baby King? That's it for me. Forty minute video. I'm not editing this shit. I'm just gonna like fucking clip this with the intro, export it, upload it. Hopefully, I didn't say anything fucking that's a slur. That's all I can ask for. No slurs, no private information. Kevin Spacey, please don't fucking like have me killed. Please, Kevin Spacey, please. I did not mean anything by your name being mentioned in this. It's just that like people disappeared, and I don't understand what happened with that, Kevin Spacey. I don't know what the fuck happened with that shit, but. I don't want any fucking smoke with Kevin Spacey. I don't at all. 